Hey everybody, welcome to another episode, and this week we're talking about Lychee's new beta features. If you are a pro subscriber to Lychee and you are using the beta version, then you already know about this stuff. But if you're a pro user and you're about to get the update, which I think maybe in like a month, then this is going to be news to you. And these features are going to be pretty awesome, so I think you're going to be excited enough that you might want to check out this episode. So stay tuned, we're going to talk about all of it. So the suction cup detection is great for hollowing. As you can see, it does point out the areas of the inside of the model that have been hollowed, but do not have adequate escape, either for, you know, drain holes or they just, you know, they're going to create suction. And so therefore they, they call them suction cups. It's always what I've lovingly called them. <laughs> what do you call them? Ah. Uh, I call them failures sometimes if they get too bad. But then I've had some massive suction cup areas that did not cause failures. So it really what it does in that sense is it just causes mass amount of peel force stress on your vat. And uh, you're, you're making your printer work harder than it has to. You're going to break your vat thick, you know, faster than you want to. Um, so getting this stuff right is actually kind of kind of good. I, I think this is a great feature. So if you are a pro user of Lychee and you do have the ability to get the beta. Go ahead and give this a try. Uh, if you haven't, it's a great feature. Does let you take a look at things that you really haven't been able to see before. Uh, and you can try all different sorts of methods to relieve, you know, the suction cupping. Obviously, you can, you can change the hollow size. You know, you can uh, uh, add holes in different areas. Uh, you can try to make really tiny holes to relieve the air, uh, the pressure. Really tiny holes don't always have an effect. And, uh, they won't always work. You, you can place a bunch of little tiny holes and pretty much the, I think the program just goes, nah, those are going to fill up with resin. They ain't going to do anything. And in a lot of cases, yeah, the little tiny ones will. They're going to fill up with fluid uh, and they'll, they'll probably even cure over. You probably won't even get much of a hole there. I think for the most part, this tool is definitely going to be something I'm going to see myself using a lot where, where I work on the hollowing, usually a lot, you know, before prior to doing the supporting, I will create a hollow version of the file. I will hollow it out. I'll create my drain holes. I'll re-export that as an STL file. So I have hollowed versions and solo, solid versions of the same exact model. I do this to keep the original file integrity. So if I ever need to call upon that original file, I can. If there's ever a problem, maybe I, I screwed something up, got a little overzealous, punched out too much geometry. Uh, you know, in those cases. But this is, um, for me, this is a great tool. This is going to give me a lot of ways to see exactly where I'm creating the suction cups with my hollowing technique. This is going to let me see where I need to put my holes to allow the most adequate drainage. And of course, you know, positioning can change the suction cups as well. So, positioning and orientation can change that, and I'll, I'll demonstrate that as well. Now, of course, there is another way to prevent suction cupping when you're doing hollowing, and that, of course, is blocking. You can block portions of the geometry and prevent them from being hollow. In the, in the case of like her, her dress in the front and the back, I don't want to put little tiny holes in the bottom. So we're going to use the blocker system and create some geometrical shapes to block out the areas that I'm going to try and keep solid. And this process in itself, you can toy with quite a lot. And you guys have probably seen me use this on a few videos demonstrated that I where I use the blockers. They're a little bit of a pain in the butt to work with sometimes. You've really only got three shapes. There are so many shapes that you really need to work with. The library of blockers needs to be improved. I would love to see some sort of geometry object that I can kind of draw points and kind of create a blob. That would be amazing. But uh, I haven't seen any kind of advancements in this feature yet. So unfortunately, you're just stuck using the basic rudimentary shapes that you have. You can block off the areas that you need to, and that will allow you to create less suction in the areas there. You can, you can remove the resin traps. You can remove all the little pockets that are going to be created. 
and that's going to help you a lot. So definitely take advantage of using the blocking system when you can't create a hole, block it. Now that's not to say you know you want to block everything because then there's no point in hollowing. The hollowing is obviously to save material, to help you print really big objects and help prevent them from failing or having to use heavy supports. And these techniques are great. So the blocking technique has to kind of come along with that. So they do kind of get married hand in hand. So you can see that when you redo the detection, the suction cups will change. You'll see where they've been modified there. And if you have to go back and make any adjustments, you can go back and make your adjustments. And then obviously, you know, you're gonna have to tweak this process. It may take you a little bit of time to kind of work that out. But nonetheless, 
this is cool. Something we did not have access to seeing before. And I know that this is obviously simulated. It's trying to determine the best possible way as it's telling you where the suction cups can be. It doesn't mean it's going to catch them all. Um, there's an example of the blocking I did in the bottom portion of her hair. And you can see there, there's even some bits there at the bottom where it's still creating a suction cup. And I did the best I could to try to match those parts up on the top and on the bottom as best as possible. So, hopefully, uh, you know, it prints as well as it should. And th this part actually does print just fine, so I've had no problems with this one. And again, it'll, you know, we can do the detection and it'll show you exactly how many suction cups there are. It'll show you exactly where that falls. And, um, you know, again, it's giving you the best suggestions as to how to fix them. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to fix every single one. They, it does not necessarily mean failure. I have to, I'm going to say that a lot. It does not, it does not mean failure. Suction cups are bad because they create more force. They're not the death of a print. Not at all. Now again, we talked about how orientation can also fix the suction cup. On this solid part, there is a tiny little suction cup at the very top. And if it concerns you so that you want to remove it, you can actually just reorient the object and try to fix that suction cupping. This particular one simply needs a tilt and uh, it'll be just fine. So this one's actually easy to pull off. We can just tilt it up and then we rerun the detection and we'll see that it is good to go now and you don't have to worry about that. Anyway, so guys, this is all for that feature pretty much. Again, this is mostly for hollowing. Hope you got something out of this video. Check out the new features. Check out Lychee Slicer. Thanks for watching and see you all soon.